Stick around because in this video I'm going to show you some tips on how to find great parking spots for your next POTA activation. Like this spot, or this spot, or even this one. I'm gonna show you some really great resources that you can use to find those awesome spots on your next Parks on the Air activation. Uh, these are all freely available online tools that I use when I'm looking for a new, uh, when I'm looking at a new park and looking for spots within that park to activate. A lot of times, you know, when you're in a, when you come into a state park, it's pretty straightforward. You know, you, you pull in, uh, go through the gate and there's typically parking areas for the day use area, parking areas for the, um, uh, the boat landings, um, parking areas around uh, the campgrounds. So, you know, there's um, lots, of little, lots of those little spots that you could usually find to activate. Uh, but um, I like to do a little, I still like to do a little bit of reconnaissance before I hit the park, especially if it's one that I've never been to before. So I'm gonna pull up the screen here and uh, this is just the, the uh, Parks on the Air map, and it shows all of the spots, you know, all of the entities that <laughs> are available for you to activate. I'm gonna pull in here, and I'm just gonna give you a couple of um, uh, examples. Now, one park that I like is uh, Council Ground State Park, north of Wausau, Wisconsin, and I think this is a good one to kinda uh, show you, you know, when, I, when we talk about day use areas, which ones are good ones to go to, which ones maybe not. I'm uh, gonna just pull up the park here. And a lot of times, you know, the mapping coordinators have done a really good job in, uh, in giving you the, you know, resources that you need to, you know, for, uh, for the, you know, to uh, use to you know, activate the park. Uh, sometimes there's, you know, down at the um, the bottom here, there they'll, they'll give you a little bit of information like hours that it's open, um, maybe things that you should look for and whatnot. And of course, there's always a website uh, that you can click on, and that will take you to the um, uh, the usually your your Department of Natural Resources site, the page for that entity. And first off, we can look at the maps, and um, I'm going to pull up the map now. Uh, Council grounds, you know, they've got a couple of different maps. They've got the uh, the hunting and trapping map, you know, for wintertime off-season activities, and then the uh, the state park campground map. And I'm going to pull that one up here. And if you look at the map, uh, you can kind of see that um, you know you come in through the entrance station, and uh, there's a couple of areas. Um, there's this big loop that kind of goes through the park, and there's a couple of areas that you can uh, you can go to and. Uh, First off, you see down here, um, and a favorite of mine, you know, would be to look for boat landings. Uh, boat landings are great places to activate. Usually the parking area is large enough that you can kind of go into a corner somewhere and uh, set up so that you're, you're sort of out of the way of, of, of a lot of the other activities that are going on in the park. Um, so that's one thing to look for. Um, another thing is uh, they've got a, uh, with this park, just off of that, there's another large parking area for the beach area. Now, I found uh, <laughs> uh, with this park, and this is one of the reasons why I wanted to uh, show you this, is that reading, you know, reading this map, you'll see that um, there's a dam and a hydro plant right here. And um, I found that when you operate next to the dam, there's power lines and, and whatnot, and you get a lot of noise on the bands. So, you know, reading, you know, looking at these maps, satellite view, I love the satellite view because like I said, that's my way of, of finding uh, these, little, these little hidden gems of activation spots. But you can see, yeah, we've got power lines, we've got a hydro dam. So you'll, wanna, you'll probably wanna stay away from that parking area. But um, the boat landing has lots of opportunities for, for activations. So uh, consider that to um, you know, make sure you look at your um, uh, maps that are available you know, for, the, for the park, the entities themselves. Okay, we're gonna pull up another, I'm gonna pull up another park here, Ackley State Wildlife Area. And I'm gonna pull this one up. 
uh, and you know, a lot of times, you know, it's, it's, it's the same kind of thing, you know, you're going to be looking at. Uh, we can pull up a lot of these in the state of Wisconsin, these wildlife areas have uh, great maps in order that you can use to find uh, where the uh, parking areas are. And um, this one has got a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of parking opportunities along the large uh, twenty you know uh, large um, area two thousand acres I think it is uh, this wildlife area is there's a parking area there's there's two parking areas that I've I've gone to uh, there's one on the uh, west side and then there's another one sort of uh, more towards the um, I guess it's more towards the the east the east side of the of the wildlife area. This cross hatched area. This is um, this is county forest, and the solid green is the um, is the wildlife area. So when you act so when you activate here at this particular state wildlife area, you're going to want to make sure that you're in the green area and not in one of the not in one of the cross hatched areas. A lot of times, you know, Google will have the um, the map sort of, um, you know, it, it will show you where the um, uh, the boundaries are, but you can't really um, rely on that uh, too much. You really have to look at the um, at the official maps, you know, from the from the state, from the the uh, the, the 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 natural resources department, in order to ascertain where where the boundaries are for a lot of the wildlife areas. So, uh, but satellite view is really handy. So if I look on the west side, if you see, if you look on the map here, you'll see this sort of, um, it looks like a little little bit of a roadway there, um, right on the edge, and pull that up. You can see this roadway right here, and I can zoom in and swivel around, and you get this, and with, with Street View, you can really see, you know, what is available for you to um, activate a lot of you know this particular spot has a lot of space uh, there's trees but the trees look like they're a little bit scrubby maybe um, so they may or may not work uh, for for hanging a wire antenna that's one thing to, to really consider um, if I move to the other space uh, here's the other on on the east on the east side of this wildlife area. You can look at the second parking area. You know, like I said, and with the street view, you can see. Yep, yeah, that's another that's another good place to activate. Trees look a little bit actually look a little bit closer to the uh, parking area, so this might be a better location for if you're going to go wire. Now, uh, one other thing to consider is um, a lot of times with these wildlife areas. You know, you might see a area that's um, labeled and gated, and I would tend not to park or pick one of these spots to activate from because I'm not going to park in front of a gate. Um, it's then you run the risk of somebody else wanting to come through there. You know, either either like a um, a DNR employee or something like that that needs to use that the gate net road. So, um, you know, uh, with the street view, you can see if that's an actual valid parking area, or um, if you want, you know, or if it or if it's just access, a gated access, and you really shouldn't shouldn't want to park there. So consider that when you're um, when you're looking for looking for spots. So um, the Google satellite maps. Uh, with the street view, that's my way in order to really, you know, find those those beautiful spots. Uh, let's look at one more quick here. Um, let's see if I can pull it up. Now this one, um, because this is going to bring home my my third point and tool, is that um, over here. There's one called the Mead uh, State Wildlife Area, and now the Mead State Wildlife Area is humongous. It's like 24,000 acres. So this is what, um, and this is something you're going to find too with like um, state forests, uh, national forests, and things like that. Is that there's just so much space, and that that you don't know really where is the best place to to operate. Because if I look at the map for the Mead, and um, 
going to pull up the western section map because I think that's actually got more um, you know, more information on the eastern section. There's a million parking spaces <laughs> in this in this very large uh, wildlife area. Um, the visitor center that might be an op an opportunity. Um, you know, some of these others might be an opportunity. And um, if we look on the Google Maps, if I pull this up here, uh, the, the visitor center's got a large parking area. Um, it looks like there's going to be a lot of activity there. I don't know if oh, there's a windmill. Uh, you can kind of see that. Um, I don't know if I'd want to activate from the visitor area itself just because of the, the level of activity that's going to be going in and out. Um, oh, I can see a parking area here. And then if I look on the map at the uh, visitor center, yep, sure enough, they got a parking area there. So that might be a that might be a place. In fact, I've I've worked I've worked from there too. Uh, but um, I think I see. You know, if you just kind of cruise up and down with the satellite view and then scroll in, um, look around. And looks like there's a some access there. That would be a nice place to go. Um, there's access on the other side of the road. Well, maybe not. Yeah, that doesn't look like it could be access. Um, but you know, you can just you can just scroll up and down. Here we go. Oh, well, here's a beautiful spot. Um, a lot of open space. Yep, it's it's signed even. You can tell that it's part of the wildlife area. I think that might be a, a put in or take out for like a canoe or a kayak. So you know there's going to be a good, um, you know, just a lot of room there to to do your thing. So yeah, scrolling. Yep. But then here's oh here's a gated area. So we're probably going to want to stay away uh, from the um, the gated area just because then you don't have to worry about moving if uh, somebody needs to get through that gate. So. Um, a lot of opportunities, um, uh, you know, just, just looking at, at some of those. Now, uh, one thing that I do, you know, if I'm going to a new location and determining where, where I want to be, because there's so many, uh, like I said, there's so many different parking areas in this particular spot is that, um, I'll pull up the coverage map for my, um, wireless provider uh, for my phone to see, you know, what kind of what kind of cell and data coverage I can expect, and that might be a determining factor if I want to be in that particular location or not. So I pull up my carrier, and already already we can tell that um, it's <laughs> may not be the best. Um, if I pull up that, let's see, county, this county highway S, this is where I usually go. The visitor center is right about here. And I can tell that I'm getting, well, 5G extended range, um, or it could be 4G LTE, possibly it's, I, when I look at this map and I'm out in some of these places, I usually kind of, I, I try to scale things down a level. So if it's saying 5G extended range, I'll probably get a weak um, LTE signal out there. Um, those two spots by the river, it looks like there's, there's decent coverage. Uh, a lot of times these maps don't um, take into account foliage. So if it's summertime and it's really foliated, your service might be weaker. Um, if I look at some of the other, on the eastern part of the, of the, the wildlife area, I can tell, you know, right away that it's just, um, yeah, um, connectivity is terrible. So I'm going to, I'm going to pick one of those spots that has at least a good coverage so I can spot myself. I don't need the internet to, um, for logging or anything like that. I'm just looking for get, you know, a strong enough, uh, connection so that I can, uh, you know, spot myself uh, for the for the activation so all right and then one final map that I like to use and um, is that 
um, a lot of times I like I like the twofer. You know, when you, the two parks um, that or the two entities. You know, maybe a tra uh, a state trail or an, a na um, a national trail running through a state park. Um, Maybe a wildlife area connected to you know inside of a state park or something something like that, um, and or or a uh, say a recreation area that's inside of a inside of a state uh, forest. So um, those are those are a couple of things that I like to really look for in my you know so we can we can do those those twofers and let's see if I can find a find one here that's a good twofer. Um, one of them is the, um, this one's another one is right by me. And this is the Plover River State Fish and Wildlife Area. I'm gonna pull up the map and and now the, um, if I look on this map, I will see that there's a couple of parking areas, if I can get this blown up a little bit. Parking area here, and this dot dash line actually signifies the um, Ice Age uh, National Scenic Trail, which is uh, running through this, um, this wildlife area. So I'm gonna find a spot that I can set up where the two intersect so I can have that those, those two park entities. And um, it to make sure that it's you know this this map is is fairly you know fairly reasonable. But if I'm searching for say for like the Ice Age Trail, and this works for other national trails like the um, North Country Ter Trail, the Pacific Crest Trail, Appalachian Trail, things like that. You know they've got um, there's online maps that are very um, let's see very accurate that will tell you where the um, um, trailheads are, and um, if they travel through other places, if I pull the map up, I can see, you know, exactly where, and, and where the trail runs. I can find you know, the Plover River here. Um, this is a, it's hard to see on this map here, but this is, you know, this is a spot that I've, I've activated, um, I've activated down further this way right here. And it's actually somebody has marked it here, Plover River Segment Ice Age Trail Parking, which is really cool. I don't think I'm going to. I'm not going to get a street view. Um, there are some trees, <laughs> so. Um, but um, if I can't get the street view, you can still sort of visualize how it's going to look, and you can see that it is a decent-sized parking area. So there is that opportunity uh, right there. So, and we know that it's on the Ice Age Trail, so we could count that as a twofer. So. Um, those are some of the maps. Uh, trail maps have, you know, like I said, for. Um, uh, verifying that the national trails or the state trails run through those areas. Uh, the Google Maps, both the uh, satellite and the street view in order to, you know, see, visualize what that space looks like uh, with, with, some, with some great photographic imagery. And then, of course, the official maps that the, um, that the, the, the natural resources, the Department of Natural Resources for your, your particular state puts out. So those will give you, um, you know, just that kind of a great overview that's of that's available. So uh, with that, so what are some of the resources that you like to use in um, planning your, your Parks on the Air activations? We'll leave them down in the comments below. I'd like to see if I'm missing any kind of a, a mapping tool or visualization tool or something like that. So uh, with that, I'm Michael, KB9 VPR. You have a great day in 7.3.